hope you're well today. I wanted to check in with you about my personal starseed story. We could go on and on for hours into this topic, but I'm going to try to keep it as succinct as possible. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube talk about their starseed story, and so thought I'd throw mine out there um, in hopes that it's helpful for your unfolding process. Um, and if you're curious about, maybe it'll help you if you're curious about what cosmic contact or cosmic consciousness is all about. My channel is about meditation and opening through sacred meditation. Check out a few of my earlier videos on how to get started in that process if you aren't already. But yeah, eventually after enough meditation and enough journeying in the inner space and meeting your, your spirit guides, some of us will come across our cosmic guides. We all have them, but not all of us will feel a call to make contact with them. Not all of us will, not all of us are uh, seeking to the degree that would be required to open our cosmic consciousness. But if you're watching this video, you probably are ready to open your cosmic consciousness if you haven't already. Um, how you know you're ready is if these stories, this kind of content makes you exciting, makes you excited, you feel interested in it, you feel curious, you feel, I don't know, a, a, a great desire to go beyond that which we know um, of the human psyche. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is the definition for the seeker or the mystic. We We sense that there's something more to consciousness, and so we get really still and go inward and there's a whole universe inside of us all but our cosmic guides just to keep it really short are a part of our higher soul they're our soul family um, you'll come across many different spirit guides they can be animal they can be indigenous they can be egyptian they can be priests um, shamans or they can sometimes look like angels or interdimensional beings People sometimes use the term ET, but interdimensional beings are, you know, it, that's a better way to describe it because they're not necessarily, it's not just about that they're off world. They can be traveling through time. They can be future incarnations of you. They can be a part of your future self or your past lineage. So the way I met mine, um, I've been meditating since 2013. And I had always wanted to really open and develop in my intuition since then. But it took, you know, I, I was intuitive, but it was not until 2018 that, like, I really opened and started getting, like, huge clairvoyant visions and claircognizant knowings. Um, the first cosmic themed, I mean, I probably had plenty before this, but that sticks out in memory, the first contact experience I had was I was meditating and I was asking about you know I think I was asking could I connect to the stone it's from Washington state and the vision I got was two humans in a spacecraft in like <laughs> like questing uniform like very Star Trek looking and they put the stone on this like reader on the ship and they relayed information about the stone back to me and so it was a very gentle initiation. It wasn't ET looking, but it was definitely space themed. Um, what's interesting about this is that I was a history buff. I was always like interested in, in history and human culture and not necessarily, and, and mostly indigenous um, paleolithic culture as an anthropology student, never really had like a great desire to explore space or like ETs even like kind of freaked me out. So it was interesting that this direction unfolded for me but after that like the first big wave of information that came psychically for me when i really like hit my stride psychically this was the year i turned 33 it was also the year that my mother passed there was a lot of big movement in my life everybody will have their awakenings at different times but i think 33 is a big number i think it's the completion of saturn return if i had to guess well anyway that was the big first big wave of clairvoyant contact i had and a lot of it was to do with the Egypt 
and I asked the primary emblem that I got that I was meant to explore in this life was the Rosetta Stone. And so I was like, well, okay, well, I'm curious. <laughs> so I asked about the Rosetta Stone every night for like months. And every time it took me into this Egyptian content. And so the short of it is I had some past life incarnations in the priest class in Egypt. Um, I was a part of the Sirius star system initiations. And it showed me a temple where people were getting initiated into Sirius Syrian energy. And so the first, I guess the first big, like, you know, contact moment was I got, I asked about this temple. They showed me it was harnessing the blue light, which was serious. <clears throat> and then it put me in this craft, like taking this initiation. I was like in this like one person craft, shot me up into space. And I met this council of Orca Wells from Sirius. And they were like, they were me. They were a part of me. And it was a very loving, warm contact. So Syrian, the Syrian star, Stargate has a lot of beings there. There's like lion beings, cat beings, aquatic beings, um, all kinds of beings there. But I, I definitely met my orca um, guides there in that vision. And then after that, every time I went into Sirius, I saw Egyptian, um, <clears throat> the Egyptian pantheon. So Anubis, Anubis was was a part of the system in a big way. One, one time when I was asking about for serious contact, I saw Anubis repeated over and over in my mind's eye. And he had the blue starlight around him. So he's definitely a gatekeeper. And then I saw Hathor, who I don't have a huge amount of information on, but I saw her. She's the one with the horns in Egypt. She's a cow, like headed goddess. And she was helping <clears throat> souls remember their Atlantean lives and their Egyptian lives and their lineage up to, to Sirius. So for a lot of us who have a deep contact experience with Egypt, um, if you already are tuned into that, you may know that um, Atlantean civilization preceded the Egyptian spiritual tradition. So a lot of the, the content that they were harnessing in Atlantis was re-anchored in Egypt. So you might have noticed that a lot of my starseed experience has to do with Egypt. That's just true for me. Um, I see Isis a lot with the blue lions. Lion guides are all over Sirius. And yeah, I see Osiris too, but there's Hathor, Anubis, Isis, and the Orca whales. So those are the big ones. And then I was also in a vision taken up to into a ship and was shown these like um, human beings that like had pale skin, but they had these like ridges around their um, foreheads in a way. And it kind of looked like chameleon or like amphibian. I couldn't really tell, but they were like in charge of communication. Like their art, the archetype they were exploring in the Godhead was communication and language. Um, and so a lot of the content I see around Egypt for me and just in general psychically is very linguistic. And so this is sort of a scribe or toth related archetype, language, words, the lexicon. Um, so yeah, and then a lot of the, the imagery I see when I ask about cosmic contact, I see, you know, basically like Starfleet looking imagery, as nerdy as that sounds, and um, diplomacy work. So the archetype of diplomacy is a soul theme of mine. And whenever I tune into my cosmic lineage, diplomacy comes in really loudly. So yes, um, that's the short of my cosmic contact experience. Why is this important? Um, not everybody will feel called to go into cosmic consciousness and to open up their starseed experience but once you get into the cosmic level time no longer exists it's sort of a time traveling experience which is really exciting and really novel and it's also a part of the wisdom um acquisition that i'm interested in i, I love getting beyond time it feels like 
a bigger picture um, for me. And then also it just helps us, um, a lot of the, the beings that, I, that are working with me on the cosmic level are, are interested in human, in helping human beings evolve. So politically evolve, um, you know, the, the heritage of human progress has been influenced positively and negatively by ET beings. And the ones that have come close, that I've let in close are trying to help us in a positive way. They want us to know that they are always with us. Um, they're our family in a way, and they're gui our guides in a way. They're not just guiding us on a personal level, but they're guiding us on a collective level too. So that, I don't want to get too much longer. I'll tune in again and, and tell you some more stories. I have a lot more that are really interesting, but you can do this too. Um, my channel is about meditation and wisdom and growth through meditation. So if you get, if you're interested in this experience and you haven't opened your cosmic contact, just know that in your cosmic consciousness, just know that if you dedicate yourself to sacred meditation, Use my channel if you need to as a resource about how to do that. But if you discipline yourself in a way that you return to this practice every day, 30 minutes or more a day, I, I really recommend ideally an hour, but let's say 30 minutes a day for a few weeks, you'll, you'll develop a, a strong communication, line of communication with your inner guides. And if you ask for your cosmic guides to come forward, they will. So good luck to you and let me know how it's going in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.